Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's April 10th, 2023, and I thought I'd grab the camera while I come out and take a break from website stuff, uh, you know, writing articles for the website and listing books and all uh, from an estate sale on our eBay uh, website and all. So enough of that. I thought I'd start over here in the western garden plot and just take a quick walk around. I haven't decided when I'm going to do this afternoon yet. I know I've got to go down. I've got to do more road work down and back with uh, with the uh, the Hulk, the Takushi uh, TLV, uh, TL12 V2. Uh, but I need to be outside in the sun a little bit. So I'm over here in the western garden plot and I thought what we do is just take a walk around a little bit and look at the plants. So these are the honeyberry plants that we transplanted last fall. Remember we did all of this uh, raising up the chain link panels, these kennel, kennel panels, putting down the weed mat and all that. And uh, so one of my goals here is some of these uh, honeyberry plants, the, we need to go ahead and um, take the lower limbs, put them underneath the soil, and that's a way of propagating them. So we'll use some staples and put some, the ones that aren't going to break, we'll, we'll stick those under the soil. And that's a way of propagating those honeyberry plants. Real, real easy way of doing it. So those are all honeyberry plants. They all look pretty good. Uh, they're, they start to, their buds start to swell and emerge a little bit later. Where the blueberry plant plants, they're doing pretty well so far. So these are the ones that, that we started from little uh, cuttings, rooted cuttings, I think four years ago now. So they're all looking really good. Uh, we did transplant a few of those. We'll look at those in a minute. These ones are two rows. <coughs> Our blueberry plants that we used to have out in the first food forest, they look like they're doing pretty well. There are some dead ends on these, but I think they're going to survive and, and all, so we'll see how things work out. We have to get the uh, weed, maps all, weed mats all set in here, and I may end up fertilizing the blueberry plants this season. Now we did inoculate the roots of all of the blueberry plant, excuse me, we inoculated the roots of all of the blueberry plants and the blackberry plants with mycorrhizal fungi and that's going to extend their functioning units of their roots. So they'll be able to work with the fungi, extend out and exchange with other microorganisms the nutrients that they need to, to prosper and grow well. So, and we've made videos about that in the past, so pretty happy with how the blueberry plants are looking so far. And every place I walk, I just see more work that I've got to do. Now, these are the thornless blackberry plants that we transplanted in the fall. So, we did one, two, three, four, five rows. They are short rows. They are planted too close together, but that's okay. And you can see the snow really snapped some of them off, so I need to clean these up some. And uh, again, the roots were inoculated with the mycorrhizal fungi. So these ones st stand a pretty good chance of doing well. We'll have to get our drip tapes down and our weed mats down so it's less work for us to deal with as the season goes on. And what else? Let's go out this gate here. The wind really beat the heck out of everything this season. So. So this is, we took the sand from the canal that we dug out last season and we really build up on top of the wood chips. So we used to have all the gooseberry plants growing all along in here. And we decided so we have way too many gooseberry plants. We've got those for sale, uh, or at least they'll be going for sale pretty soon. So we're gonna be laying the weed mat back down, put the staples in it, but because of our winds, it keeps whipping it up. So one of the things we'll be doing is uh, planting white clover seed all along this margin, all the way around. So that's one of our goals. Uh, over here, uh, the, where the living fence is, We'll take a quick walk over here. So under the tunnel here, uh, this fall we transplanted uh, our brown turkey and Chicago hardy tr uh, fig trees all along in here. They did pretty well. Uh, the ones that we did a year ago, they actually did pretty darn well. So I'm pretty happy with 
with how they've done and we use the the leaf mulch from the town and we put that all over underneath here there's a video I'll try to remember to link that if I don't just check it out and uh, so we'll be pulling this off pretty darn soon because I doubt that we're going to be getting much below 15 degrees uh, Fahrenheit uh, you know it, much longer and we'll also be getting a lot of the uh, trees out of the um, out of the coop area and get them out into the uh, greenhouse so there are some dead tips on some of these ones so these are all are all our curly willow transplants we put in all along in here and we'll just have to see how they end up doing it's going to take them a little while to start leafing out but we we uh, took hardwood cuttings and started all of these uh, curly wills from hardwood cuttings. So it's still a bit too early to see. Here in zone 5A, uh, this is uh, the warmest day we've seen since the fall time. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with our system. Even given the high winds that we have here, our system for protecting the uh, the brown turkey and Chicago hardy fig trees. So we'll keep our fingers crossed and hope that it works out as well as I, as I had hoped it will. We'll take a look in the uh, greenhouse right now. So in previous years, you always saw all the lights and all of the plants uh, and all of these stands on each side. And uh, that's not necessary this year. So we're, uh, because we're just starting very few uh, plants inside the house. And these are all our shipping supplies for, uh, for various products and all. Then out here, uh, it looks like a lot of the, the plants have survived the winter. We got some pruning to do. We got lots of trees here. So one of my goals is very soon is to get all the, uh, the weight bags, so these are all stone, and some of them have sand in these bags, and these are used for the various tarps or the weed mats, whatever it is that we got. Uh, we did have one order already with a bunch of pawpaws, so those were pawpaws that are missing from here, some hosta berries and all. So we need to, we pack these in real tight to one another to help protect the root zones of these plants during the winter months. And again, over here, various trees, persimmons over in here, and oh, persimmons and pawpaws, and I don't know what else I've got there. Hosta berries, lots of hosta berries in here. Over here, we got lots of different trees. We got some white oak trees in here. I've got to get these, I got to get some bins ready to put these in because there's no way I can physically get those started. Gooseberries, the leaves are already starting to emerge from some of the gooseberries out here. Yeah, they're, they're really opening up quickly. And I see more gooseberries here. The leaves are emerging. These are red currants over here. And so we got to come out and clean this whole area up. I'll be storing the insulation panels over here between the coop and the greenhouse. And that's what I'm thinking about right out here right now. Close this up. Quackers is out of the coop now. He's out in the pond. He's made it back, made it uh, uh, close companion friends with the uh, two Canada geese who are here every year. We usually have three sets here, but they all fight amongst the different ponds, so I'm not sure where they're all being now. With the beaver ponds, it seems, with the beaver spillways, I'll say this, I have to go down every two days to take care of those. So that's a bit of a hassle, but. The grapple on Mini-Me has been so fantastic. So as a, as a break from other things, I come out and I use the, the grapple to remove some of the, uh, the dam, the, the initial parts of dams that the beaver have been building up along the spillways. And that's really important. So I've got lots of heavy equipment earthworks work to do out back. It looks like I got to clean up the snowblower and get this all detached. Lots of dirt on it from this season because we had so many thaws 
man it just chopped into the ground but this is a beast it did a really fantastic job now we're going over to the central garden plot here so there's still the cover crop remnants on here so i've got to pull the drip tapes run the uh, flail mower over the area and this area here i think we're going to be predominantly just uh propagating more of our uh, trees and berry bushes for 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 selling and all uh, so we'll get all these beds set we will have our potatoes some potatoes over in this area as well the deer are in here every single night feeding which is really awesome let's go over into the eastern garden plot and see some of the things we're doing here We'll try and get in here. So, the garlic we planted last fall, that's doing really well so far. Really, really nicely. So we always grow way too much garlic. We still haven't <laughs> processed the remainder of the garlic from last year. And none of the beans the scarlet red runner beans from over on this large trellis here have been processed. They're still out there in the drying racks in the, in the sugar shack. Uh, this bed and this bed, uh, you may recall last year, uh, Thea and I went out back just south of the solar panels, just between the solar panels and Pond 6, and transplanted all of our red raspberry plants out there. Now we used to have them in the food forest, uh, but, you know, as we're getting older, we're finding we want to have our berry plants closer and all. It's easier to come out and pick berries more frequently <clears throat> as well. So just like we moved the blueberries and the black, the thornless blackberry, blackberry varieties, and we have two, two varieties. We have the, uh, the Chesters and the Triple Crown. And we only have one variety, sort of a hybrid uh, raspberry plant that we've been growing the thorns are very small, delicious raspberries. They are susceptible to the spotted wing Drosophila fly, uh, which uh, our kingbirds are back here. And uh, so I've seen a lot of our birds coming back. So they're out here. So I'm pretty excited about that. But I think what we're going to do is if we have enough red raspberry plants, we'll plant them in these two beds here. And uh, this is a bed with the... Uh, the oh, the Dutch red shallots are in this bed, so they haven't started to emerge yet. And again, uh, when you see us harvesting the Dutch red shallots, almost like clover, we, you take off one clove out of a garlic head, which has multiple cloves in it, depending on the uh, cultivar. And you stick that one clove in and you get an, another whole head if there's enough cold days uh, in, in the winter months for it to uh, divide and produce several cloves. Uh, that's the benefit of planting these things in the fall. Now you can plant the, um, the Dutch red uh, shallots during the springtime and they still will do well. But we take one shallot, put it in each hole, and that will, for, from our experiences so far, give us over a dozen different shallots. And these, we found that we get at least a year and a half of storage in our CRISPR and our refrigerators. Now, we actually have a couple of refrigerators so we can put them in there, but boy, are they delicious. They're not just an onion, uh, they're a mild onion and a mild garlic sort of mix is how I call these Dutch red shallots. And uh, we still have our, uh, our cover crop here. And this, this whole area was one that we tried doing a cover crop for all the paths, a, a living mulch for all the paths and all. I don't know that we're gonna continue doing that this year. Oh, you can see some of the, um, this is the Roman uh, chamomile is coming up here. And of course the black eyed Susans will come up a little bit later. This is the uh, winter rye over the area where the uh, sweet potatoes were last year. I have to get over here soon and transplant these strawberry plants because the ones that we bought a year ago never worked out. So they're under here and now is the time to transplant them. I got to get started on that this week. 
uh, which is a real hassle. Over here, these are some of the thornless blackberry plants. By the way, one of the things I'm going to try and do this week, I'll go over where we're going to be putting the materials in just a moment. I'm going to try in the next week or two and dig up the remainder of the uh, thornless blackberry plants. That's the triple crown and the Chester plants. These produce those great big juicy blackberries and the, the plants don't have all the thorns on it. So it's a real pleasure, pleasure. But they do need to be pruned. It takes three years for them to grow up and really produce really good uh, tough uh, uh, floral canes. So you get the primocane the first year, then the floral canes the second year. But they really get robust and do great. And I've made videos about that in the past. <clears throat> so here we do have, <clears throat> we're trying to root some of these ones. These are thornless blackberry uh, root cuttings. So we'll see how they end up doing. And I did stick some honeyberry cuttings, hardwood cuttings over in here as well, a few of them. I don't have a lot of hope for those, but we'll see what does actually happen. Now, each year we sort of struggled with uh, what to do with our rain gutter garden. Uh, there's rain gutters underneath these beds, underneath that wood area there. And there's holes in each one of these. Uh, these are uh, what you would mix concrete in. They're about six, six or eight inches deep, uh, bi uh, plastic bins, PVC bins. And I have holes drilled in them with a wicking uh, cup. And I'll try and show that when I take these out. But I'm going to take all of these out. We're going to reuse all of the soil that's in here. And we're going to put them in those IBC totes. Uh, uh, Intercontinental -con uh, bulk containers. So we're going to put some, some of the soil in those. And we're going to uh, be healing in and growing some of our trees. So our... Our, our swamp white oaks, our white oaks, and all. Since I'm not going to be able to get those all on the ground in the forest, I'm just, I can't move as fast as I used to be able to move and get as much accomplished in a day. So one of the things I'm going to do is remove this area here, put in some of the uh, the uh, IBC totes over in here, some ch tall ones and some short ones. At least that's my initial plan, and uh, reuse all of this soil in those and. Uh, and I guess that's my plan, in a sense, and this video is getting too long again. Anyway, so here we are over here in the western garden plot. Uh, I still haven't decided in this little trip around here just what I'm going to do today. But uh, at least you got to see some of the choices. I do need to get down and back and remove some more of the beaver uh, spillway dams today and fill in some more of the soil on that little roadway area that, that was eroded some. So if you have any comments or questions, please, please uh, let us know, leave them below, give us a thumbs up if you found this of value, share it with your friends. Uh, we want to grow the channel, we want to grow the website. The website again is mindfullivingsanctuary.com. Uh, please visit it, uh, leave some comments under the articles. The articles are separate from the newsletter, uh, and I didn't explain that very well in the last video, but this video is getting too darn long. Thanks so much for watching, and have a super fantastic day. Bye-bye now.